Post our first red card of the evening, one in a red. Of the two target creatures can't block this turn. Flashback. Oh sweet. Functional reprint of a original Innistrad card. Should not be played in all of your decks, but if you're very aggressive, if you're playing like red black. They can certainly win some games. You can play one or two. Especially since black has all those like on hit effects, right? Yeah. Ardent Elementalist. Three and a red. Creature Human Shaman. Two and a one. Two one enters the battlefield. Return target instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's like a graveyard for removal spells, or a grave digger for removal spells. Sure. That's, a, that's not a bad uh, cost for this style of effect. Usually we see this in blue, and you'd have to be playing like two blue blue or three blue blue or something. So just like a straight three and a red, two one. Body's not that impressive, you know, just a two and one, but probably returning some sweet burn spell. <laughs> modern shamans, probably not, <laughs> probably not. You know, you have eternal witness in modern shamans, right? Now um, we could actually like be a hit for Coco and get back Coco. The better Archaeomancer? The better Archaeomancer is probably the five mana three three prowess one, right? That one's kinda fucked. Fucked up. Or maybe one of the expensive ones that just like cast the spell or something. Anyway, this card's fine. It's value. Value is always good. Bloodthirsty adversary, one in a red, two two, haste. Oh, I think this might be my pick for the best one. I can't remember what it does, but I remember liking it a lot. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay two and a red any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many 1-1 counters on Bloodthirsty Adversary. Then exile up to that many target instant or sorcery cards with mana value three or less from your graveyard and copy them. You may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana costs. Yeah. So this one's, this one's a little bit easier to evaluate than the other ones because we've seen it. We've seen something real similar before. For starters, two mana for a 2-2 with haste is already closer to constructed playable than the other ones we've looked at, just like in terms of base stats. Like if you're curving out with red, like you don't really give a shit if you get much more out of it. Sometimes you just need a two mana 2-2 with haste, right? And then at five mana, you're basically playing a uh, Dark Dwellers, which I played a lot of. <laughs> I, qu I qualified for the Pro Tour playing a Dark Dwellers deck, like a, like a Mardu control deck type thing that was uh, splashing green for Siege, Siege Rhino. Anyway, this card's a little bit more aggressive than Dark Dwellers. It doesn't have Menace. Menace is a great ability, but I mean, Haste is also a great ability. And you're only getting a 3-3 instead of a 4-4, and that matters. But it scales. It scales even further. Eh? If you top deck in the late game when you have a pile of mana, you can do it twice. Obviously, flashing back shocks isn't that good, but if you can flash back like a like a good three drop, like a read the bones or a Coligan's command or something, then it starts to look like a really good card, really valuable. If you can flash back multiple, oh baby, oh baby. Burn finisher, yeah, burn finisher, or like some kind of mid range thing. Get a wider access of uh, of spells to flash back. If you're playing multicolors. Does this replace Dark Dwellers in Cube? Maybe. <laughs> I'd certainly I'd certainly fuck with it, right? It might be way better. It's a vampire? Yeah. I think that's more of like a a standard or limited consideration though, right? Historic vampires is usually either mono black or black white. Sweet card. Sweet card is sweet. Clearly very good. Alright, Brimstone Vandal. Two and a red. Creature Devil. Menace. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day when it is a battlefield. When day becomes night or night becomes day, it deals one damage to each opponent. Hmm. So I mentioned this earlier that, like, Menace is 
totally fine, totally reasonable for limited. And it's true here. I kind of wish this card was a 3-2. I'd be a little bit more excited about it. But this isn't bad. Getting like the repeated drain, even if it's not attacking in. Or like contributing to it. I don't think this card is as good as the um, the black common that becomes a 4-4. Four -four. I feel like this card is better. <laughs> Just like having a 4-4 four -four menace some part of the time. Instead of like the weird ping ability. This ability is certainly more red, but just for comparison, right? They're both 3-mana, 2-3 menaces. Alright, burn down the house. 3 red red, sorcery. Choose one. Burn down the house deals 5 damage to each creature in each planeswalker. Or you can create 3 one, one red devil creature tokens with whenever this creature dies, it deals 1 damage to any target, and they gain haste until end of turn. I really like that they give it uh, haste until end of turn increases the chance that this is going to be like a relevant top deck. The reason you're playing this card is because you want a sweeper that's not dead um, if your opponent doesn't have anything. Like if there's an empty board, you top deck bring down the house. You can like pressure your opponent's life total, make some one ones, potentially even like finish off a planeswalker or something. If your opponent only has one creature, like piddly creature in play, this might just be better than drawing a sweeper too, right? And just making three one ones. Flexibility is always sweet. And then in terms of a sweeper, it's not bad. Five damage to each creature in each planeswalker. I'll clear a lot of stuff. Yep. Someone at Wizards knows what they're doing. I think this card was designed by Melissa DeTora. I think she, uh, she tweeted about it. Cool folk for sure. All right, burn the accursed. Four and a red instant. Deals five damage to target creature. And two damage to that creature's controller. That creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Yes, the exile clause is really relevant in this format. A lot of creatures coming back. And then it's got like a little bit of searing blaze there. Thanks for two damage to the face. Especially relevant in a black red and getting real aggro. This card's fine. You can only fit in so many 5-drops. The reason, like, the common 5-drops can be so good is because you can only put so many of them in your deck. You have to pick and choose. Cathartic Pyre. One in a red instant. Choose one. Deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker. Perfect. It's, all, it's already first pickable. What's the next one? Discard up to 2 cards, then draw the many cards. Okay. So I don't think this card is competing with um, either Fateless, Fateless Looting or Lightning Helix in Historic. Even considering that it's like sort of like a split card in between, like a shitty split card in between the two cards. But it seems really good for Standard, right? Obviously you're happy picking this in Limited. And it's just a great card. But it seems like quite good for Standard too. Hits Planeswalkers, not just creatures. And then the ability to loot. The, um, the first ability is dead. I'm into it. Compared to Fire Prophecy. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar to Fire Prophecy, right? I guess Fire Prophecy does both. Yeah, I suppose Fire Prophecy is a better card, but it does require a target. Whereas you can cast this card without a target, and you can dig a little deeper if you care about that. It's a good comparison, though. Curse of Shaken Faith, one in a red enchantment or a curse, rare enchant player, whenever enchanted player casts a spell other than the first spell they cast each turn, or copies a spell, Curse of Shaken Faith deals two damage to them. Huh. This is a really interesting card. So in limited, you're like punishing someone for, for trying to like flip day to night, that sort of thing. Which comes up, I mean, if you play this early enough in a game of limited, you'll probably get a couple, at least a few triggers out of them, out of it. Overall, I don't think this is good enough for limited play. Is this good enough for constructed? I 
I think there's better hoses for combo, better hoses for storm. Maybe the idea is that you play this in your as like a like very burn specific hoser. A chain of smog deck. You know what else hoses a chain of smog deck? A, a lightning bolt, <laughs> a removal spell for their for their uh, their payoff, right? Yeah, I don't think Burn players are playing this over Eidolon either, but like, Eidolon's not an historic. Yeah, they have to be real niche. I don't see it. I'm predicting no play. <laughs> Gotta throw at least one bold prediction out there, huh? Electric Revelation, two in a red, instant. It's an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card, draw two cards. And it's got a flashback for three in a red. Yeah, I think this card would be, like, really good if the front side was only two mana. It's still good, but it's not, like, absurdly good. Yeah, the, it still has the additional cost of discarding a card on flashback. Red card advantage. It is red card advantage. I don't know how much red cares about card advantage in this limited format. Red seems like really aggressive. Yeah, close to good, right? I guess discarding a card isn't always a downside in this format. If you like really want to get something in the bin. Yeah, I mean, if, if it is a slower format, then you're gonna have time for shit like this. Or that blue card that just, like, makes clues or whatever. Anyway. Falcon Wrath Perforator. One in a red, 2-1. Whenever it attacks, it deals a damage to the defending player. That's kind of cool. Yeah, red-black vampire is definitely gonna be a thing. The black vampire is pay being payoffs for, like, the red vampires getting in damage. This one curves really nicely. Falcon Wrath Pit Fighter, one red, two one. Vampire Warrior, rare. One red, discard a card, sacrifice a vampire, draw two cards. Activate only if an opponent lost life this turn. <laughs> That's a really hard ability to evaluate. Discard a card, sack a vampire, draw two cards. That's so specific. <laughs> you have to discard a card. I guess there's like madness vampires. Not in standard, but you know. <laughs> Do you play this in the in the historic mana stack? Yeah, I know it can sack itself. I know it's a vampire. You think it's bad? Is a jackal pup ever bad? It is a jackal pup with upside, right? Like obviously, this is, ability isn't a downside. Even if it, even only it happens rarely, it's still something. Why make this rare? Bring those fucking wild cards. <laughs> you think it's a top card for cube? Well, it's, it's certainly better than Jackal Pup. I've heard of people that like still make their, make people drafting their cube use Jackal Pup just cause it's so iconic. I'm like, no, you wanna play red aggro? You gotta play this shit. You're gonna play your fucking Savannah Lions with downside. <laughs> like a real red mage. You have both Ragavan and Jackal Pup in your cube. Love it. <laughs> Love it. You should make people play both. <laughs> Every time you draft Ragavan, you have to draft like some awful card that comes like chained to it and like also has to make your deck. Anyway. Famished Foragers. 
Three and a red. Wonders Battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, add triple red. Two and a red, discard a card, draw a card. Hmm. Oh, I should probably talk about Pitfire a little bit for limited. Because some people in limited just, like, always want to play their new sweet rares or whatever. And so they'll, like, build, do, like treat this like a bomb, treat it like a build around. It's not. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a bomby limited card. If your pool uh, points you towards, like, red, red, black aggro anyway, then obviously, yeah, play your one mana 2-1. But it's very, very hard to completely like run someone over it like you can in constructed. So a one mana two one should not be seen as like a bomb, a build around, that sort of stuff. So I would like I would draft like a premium removal spell over this card. If I didn't like value rare drafting or whatever. Like a Cathartic Pyre. You should draft Cathartic Pyre over Falconrath Pit Fighter most of the time. That's what I'm getting at. Not always. Not always. There's always exceptions. But just trying to put it in context. Famished Foragers. 3 red for a 4-3. When it does Battlefield, if opponent lost life this turn, get triple red. And then 2 and a red, discard a card, draw a card. That's kind of cool. I like that the it's got that payoff on there. So if you have like nothing else to do with your mana, you can at least get a loot in. You think Forgers is like a fucked up popper combo piece? Yeah, almost, almost, huh? Hmm. Probably not a high pick but also not terrible. I'd put it in the realm of filler. I think it's a little bit better if you care about the vampire tribe, but not that much. Fang Fangblade Brigand, three in a red, creature human werewolf, one in a red, gains plus one plus one first strike until end of turn. That's a very good ability. And it's daybound. Let's see what nightbound gets us. A four or five. And it also has the first strike ability. And then for five mana, your creatures can get plus two plus oh. Yeah, this card's fucking sweet, right? Really hard to block. And then it's got the like anthem for your squad. Yeah, I think you'd first pick this card pretty easily, huh? Festival Crasher, one in the red, one three. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. Little devil. I'm usually kind of meh on these cards. Two in it for a one three body is like fine for limited though. When you play something, it becomes a three three. I mean, if you have a hole in your curve, you have a hole in your curve. Flame Channeler, one in a red, 2-2. Two, two. Whatever spell you control deals damage, transform Flame Channeler. So you like, you shock the opponent or whatever, and then it transforms. And you get an Elemental Wizard, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a spell you control deals damage, put a Flame Counter on Embodiment of Flame. One mana, remove a flame counter from embodiment of flame, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Weird. So it's a two mana 2-2 two -two that gives you like a payoff for playing more burn spells. And the payoff is that you like might draw more burn spells, but you have to pay mana to draw the spells. The the cost and the body and stuff, it's also like efficient. It seems like it should be good in like a like a burn deck for constructed, but I don't think it is quite. I don't think it's quite there.
Yeah, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters that it flips off of dealing damage to creatures and stuff. Like you're saying, like, if you shock their creature, shock their Birds of Paradise or whatever, it flips. Two mana, three, three. Yeah, but I mean, you have to spend you have to spend mana after playing it to make it a three, three. Isn't it just Watch Wolf that occasionally draws a card or two? I don't know, maybe I'm spoiled, but. Maybe I'm spoiled, but that doesn't excite me much these days. Turns your creature removal into more cards, what's not well like, not to like. Well, I mean, you have to spend, um, you have to spend mana on that, right? And it's not more cards, you, have, you can only play that this turn. And then the creature has to s sit around, right? So you're spending two mana on your 2-2. Two -two. Like, ideally you're playing that on turn two, right? Hey, Orional, thanks for the 15 months there. Looking sharp, I thank you. So you may or may not be actually flipping it on turn three. Like, you have to untap with your thing. That didn't have haste, you know, it didn't get in damage. <laughs> I am spoiled, look at me. Two, two mana, two two doesn't even have haste, and then it flips and becomes a three three. Three three, vanilla until you can actually put mana into it and exile the top card of your library, which you may or may not be able to cast. Reminds you of Steamkin. It doesn't really remind me of Steamkin. Steamkin, Steamkin was kind of doing the opposite thing, right? Steamkin was converting your gas into mana. Well, this card kind of like bottlenecks your mana. Like you might draw more gas, but you need to have like a ton of mana open. Because you're spending your mana for the burn spell, and then you're spending your mana to activate this. I guess you can leave the, the counters on it and then activate it when you have open mana on your next turn, like end of turn, burn their thing. It just involves a lot of this card sitting around before you can get value out of it. But maybe maybe that's better. Maybe that's better than I'm giving, giving it credit for. What is it want this? I haven't played that much standard lately. I have no idea if it would want this. Yeah, Steam Kim was just on cast. Yeah. I mean, that's the difference between a common and a. or an uncommon and a rare, right? Stuff like that. Cast trigger versus damage trigger. Remember when Thing in the Ice took four spells to do anything? Yeah, but Thing in the Ice does four spells to do everything, right? It's not. <laughs> that's not anything. That's everything. Bounce your board, take seven. Not really the same, the same level. Anyway, Mono Red Burn wants this in Thermal Alchemist in a uh, in Historic. I don't think this card's historic playable. I'm like hemming and hawing over whether it's standard playable. I've been wrong. I've been wrong about two mana threats before. But Flame Channeler doesn't excite me. Anyway, we can move on. In terms of limited, in terms of limited, the scale is lower. I don't think this card is bomby and limited. But if you have a few things that are doing damage, the potential to maybe draw a card is better. Thermos in standard. Okay. That's kind of cool. 
It doesn't work with channel iron. Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't flip your channel iron. It doesn't flip your channel iron and, uh, and stuff because it says whatever a spell. Once a creature's in play, it's, it's a permanent, not a spell anymore. But they both uh, reward you for playing burn. I suppose. I feel like Flame Channeler is too mana hungry. But yeah, I, I've said we'll, we'll move on a few times now. I should actually move on. Geist Flame Reservoir, 200 red artifact. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, put a charge counter on it. 100 red, tap, remove any number of charge counters from Geist Flame Reservoir. It deals that much damage to any target. And then 100 red, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if this card's good or not. This one this one has, like, the same issue for me as the Flame Channeler, right? Where, like, to get your extra card, it's mana hungry. You have to spend two mana. Spend two mana to get a chance at something that you can play. Clearly it's supposed to be, like, a payoff card or a, a gas engine in a burning type deck. Seems slow, does seem slow. Only once per turn? Yeah, I mean drawing one card per turn is is fine. If the if the activated ability was less. You think this card's basically expressive iteration? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Spending at least five mana to maybe draw a card. <laughs> anyway. Worst Fire Mines Research. I don't know if it's worse Fire Mines Research. Fire, Fire Mines Research wasn't that good. Maybe it is worse Fire Mines Research. At least it only takes one color. Yeah, I'm not excited. I think this card's rate limited, though. Like, there's no conditions on the activated ability. So if you can, like, slow down the game to a spot where you can, like, reliably play the extra card. If the format's slow enough. In a hyper-aggressive format, I don't, I don't know if this card would be any good. But in a slow one, that's just gonna run away with the game. Harvest Tide Infiltrator, two in a red, trample, daybound. You get a 4 4 trample. 4 4 trample seems worse than 4 4 menace to me. But, I mean, most things are. This card's good. Give it for a 3-2. Nice and aggro. Yeah, I like the Altar Border too. I think they work well. Fit the art style for them too. A druid? They're gonna be druid werewolves. You think it should be druid instead of human werewolf? Alright, immolation. Red, Enchantment Dora, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, minus two. Sweet. So you're usually using this as like a dead weight to kill your opponent's creatures that have two toughness or less. But sometimes you can use this as a pump spell. Make your 4-4 four, four Trampler a 6-2 if you like need six damage. Old ass reprint. Emerald Harrier, one in the red, creature wolf, three in the red, target creature can't block this turn for 2 2. Yeah, that's solid. You don't need much, right? You don't need much on your early curve out creatures. Light up the Knight, X red, sorcery, light up the Knight deals X damage to any target, deals X plus one damage instead. Target's a creature or planeswalker. 
So if your opponent plays like say um like a Ragavan on turn one, you can kill it just by one mana. Oink. And then the flashback here is a little wonky. Three in a red, remember remove X loyalty counters from when planeswalkers you control. If you cast this spell this way, X can't be zero. So you need to have some kind of a planeswalker in play to remove the counters. You are just paying the three and a red, like you don't have to pay the X. So if you've got like <laughs> a lot of planeswalker loyalty, you can convert that to damage. But yeah, the front side's a weird fireball. Or not front side in the the non-flashback part. Yeah, I mean, Fireball's always always good and limited. Always, like, bomby and limited. You can draft it, you can splash for it. The flashback is less likely to come up, but also who cares. said no one will ever use the flashback on this card. That's not true. <laughs> it might not be common to use the flashback on this card, but it'll definitely come up. Have you ever played EDH in your life? Or, or watched it being played? Or talked to someone that plays EDH? <laughs> It'll definitely come up. Lunar Frenzy, X Red, instant. Target creature you control gets plus X plus O and gains first strike and trample until end of turn. This actually seems like a really good ability to me. The first strike saves your creature, and then the trample takes takes advantage of the plus X plus O. <laughs> yeah, I mean if this all happens, this is like almost better than that fireball. I think I'd pick this card fairly, fairly heavily for a pump spell. Usually I don't value pump spells that highly, but I think this one's good. It definitely has that fireball effect where it can just like kill kill your opponent. And then it can also just be like an efficient way of winning combat with the first strike. Bad Embercleave is still okay, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Bad Ember Cleave. You wanna fucking pump your Death Toucher? Ugh, so good. Anyway. Yeah, you can pick that one pretty aggressively. Moon Rager's Slash, two and a red, instant. Costs two less to cast if it's night. Deals three damage to any target. That's pretty hot. We've got Lightning Bolt at home. I wonder if any of the daybound, nightbound stuff we saw was constructed playable enough. The Moon Reader's Slash is actually going to see playing. I mean, people played that fucking Wizard Lightning Bolt. Anyway, clearly a very limited card. Really excellent, excellent limited card. Night, Nightning Bolt. I like it. Moonvale Regent. Three and a red creature dragon. Four, four flying. Whenever you cast a spell, you may discard your hand if you do draw a card for each of that spell's colors. And then when it dies, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of colors among permanents you control. I feel like this card's really good. Like, even if you're playing this in, like, mono red with a really tight curve, right? Like, playing a burn spell and discarding your, your empty hand because you're hellbent. Or discarding a madness card or whatever the fuck. And drawing a card is already good enough. Even if you're not buying into like the the multicolor aspect. Is a four mana four four flyer good? I mean it's not always good and constructed, but that's where I'm considering this card. I usually evaluate rears and mythics for constructed and like talk about them for limited if I think they might be misleading for limited. But this is like obviously a limited bomb, right? We don't have to. <laughs> we 
we don't have to go too deep into detail on that. You think this is going to be like a Thunderbreak region type card? Yeah, I can see that. I think it was uh, Seth that was talking about playing this with Manamorphose. <laughs> Manamorphose for free, draw three cards. Hybrid Mana Spell would count as two colors, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the 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 first home I would look for this card would be potentially like um, Historic Madness. Obviously, there's going to be like aggressive standard decks where it where it makes sense, but it, the Historic Mono Red Madness deck it looks really interesting. Play your season Pyromancer and just like <laughs> churn through a whole shitload of cards. <laughs> Play an artifact, discard your hand just for fun, just because you want to discard your hand. <laughs> Don't even care that you're not drawing anything. Yeah, doing like a little bit of damage on the way out is cool too. I mean, if you can play this in a, in a three or four color deck, then it's kind of sweet. Some Metamorphoses, some Lightning Helixes. This does seem hot with Lightning Helix, right? Another modern, interesting card. Not being able to cast spells is a downside. No, it's it says whenever you, you may you may discard your hand. You don't have to do the ability. It is pure upside. No feel bad elements here. Oh man, the art looks way sweeter in this higher death. I was sitting here looking at these like blurry. Look at these stained glass wings, huh? Beautiful. All right, mounted dread knight. Four and a red, creature vampire knight, trample, and just battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it if the opponent lost life this turn. Sure. That's, those are, uh, that's are really good stats for a, for a five mana beater, huh? I've said this with a few other cards, but like the, the only downside, the only downside to these like really good five drops is that you can only put so many five drops in your deck. And there's a lot of other good ones that this is competing with. Great card though. Potentially like a 6-5 five for 5, trample, red. Yeah, real nice red top end. Getting real aggro with it. Neonate's Rush, 2 a red instant. The spell costs 1 less to cast if you control a vampire. Deals 1 damage to target creature and 1 damage to its, its controller draw card. That's sweet. Yeah, again, this seems to be like the, the red has the enabling, the damage enabling, and then black has the, the payoffs. Obsessive Astronomer, one in a red creature, human wizard. If it's neither day nor night, becomes day when it enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, discard up to two cards and draw them into cards. This astronomer is going to do some very aggressive looting. You think it's just I eight? Yeah. I mean, looting two is is good, or rummage two or whatever. I'm thinking of like how good Duretti's ability is, the four mana Duretti. Sometimes you play that card just to do some looting, so you don't flood out. Yeah, I wouldn't call this card like super good or anything like that. It's not giving you like actual value. It's only giving you selection. But sometimes that's a use really useful thing. Just make sure you don't flood the fuck out. Two cards is a lot of cards. And it is stapled on like a like a fine body, like two mana for two two is fine. In your aggro red deck. Pax Betrayal. Two in red sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. Gains haste until end of turn. Control a wolf for werewolf scry too. 
Okay. There's certainly there's certainly uh, enough sack effects in this format for Pax Betrayal to be interesting. And you get a Scry 2 attached. Threatened effects. A lot of times you want to save your threatened effect for like when you can swing in for lethal or remove their blocker and get an attacker at the same time. So putting the Scry 2 on it is interesting. But maybe if you're just like looking for that fit, that burn to finish off the game. Or if you're playing it as like a value threaten with a sack, of, a sack outlet. Maybe that's useful too. Still, I mean, it's like more shit on top of a threaten, and threaten is usually seen playing. Depending on the deck, depending on the archetype, how aggressive you are, how many sack outlets you have. Sometimes you can just stack them, right? Play like four threatens if you have four sack outlets. Treat them like good removal. Play with fire, one red, instant. Play with fire deals two damage to any target. If a player was dealt damage this way, scry one. Oh, this card's hot. Where are my beta shocks? I need to set something on fire. I need something to wipe my ass with. Because play with fire just fucking destroyed it. Sweet. I like having this card in standard. Might play this card someone to start too. Purifying Dargan. Three red red for a 4-3 flyer. Already got ourselves a solid limited card. Whenever it attacks, deals one damage to target creature defending players controls. If it's a zombie, it deals two damage instead. Yeah, this card's good. I think we've seen something similar, right? Isn't there like a, a five mana 3-3 flyer that deals like one damage to a creature on attack? And this one can like incinerate a zombie. Sure. The art is sick. Yeah, the art's, the, art, the art's almost too sick. I feel I feel like it should be smaller for, for just being a 4-3. Maybe not. Where are you, Glorybringer? Yeah, we got Glorybringer at home, huh? Raise the effigy. One red instant, choose one, destroy target artifact, or target attacking creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Cool. I like having little uh, utility cards like that that are main deckable, right? You can just use this as a pump spell. You can also potentially blow up an artifact. I haven't seen the artifacts in the set though, so I don't know how, how good this card is. But it seems fine on first glance. Reckless Stormseeker, two and a red. Creature, human, werewolf, the bidding combat on your turn. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn. So that could be itself, right? And it could become a 3-3 three, three haste if you wanted to. And then it is, of course, daybound. When it flips, becomes a 3-4 werewolf. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus two, plus one, and gains trample and haste until end of turn. Well, that's real hot. So you play this when it's night out. You get a three mana a fucking 5-4 haste trample. <laughs> It's pretty hot. I wonder if this is one of those, uh, we were talking about, if, are there like constructed playable day and night cards for that lightning bolt? This kind of seems like one of those, huh? It's like not embarrassing for the front half, then if it ever does flip, then whatever is night bound. It's not legendary rain, so you can like flip one and then your others come in all hot. Card seems good enough for standard. I agree, it does seem good enough for standard. Why does this werewolf have a jetpack? Because it was a storm seeker. It's the human. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> don't, don't question the awesome shit. <laughs> it doesn't fly. I mean, it doesn't have to be a good jetpack. It's the the jetpack's giving haste. Zooming along. He's getting the zoomies. It's like having rocket shoes, you know? You're not necessarily going to be flying, but you can zoom along. Okay. 
your favorite card of the ones we've seen. It's a sweet card. You want to see the alt art? This is very, uh, <laughs> this is very anime, huh? This pose and the lightning and stuff. Just stands there and yells at you and that makes it more powerful for some reason. Yeah, sweet card. Obviously Nutty and Limited, probably constructed playable. I'm excited to play with it. Seize the storm, four and a red sorcery. Create a red elemental token with a trample and this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard plus the number of cards with flashback you own in exile. Flashback six and a red. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I just read this. I have no idea what it does. That was a whole lot of words. All right, five mana, sorcery. You get an elemental creature token with trample. Okay. It's power and toughness are equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. Okay. Plus the number of cards with flashback you want in exile. Okay. So it counts itself when you flashback it. It's still counting itself. It's not like shrinking its power and toughness or whatever. So it's a spells matter payoff. It doesn't count all of your spells in exile, only the ones with flashback. But that's probably good enough for this limited format, huh? In a dedicated self mill deck, this card's actually pretty sweet. And it being an Innistrad set, there'll certainly be a little bit of that going on, huh? Cool. Does have trample too, can't just be bricked. Think of it as that like spider maker, but for spells instead of creatures. And you'll be building your decks appropriately. Smoldering Egg, one in a red, creature dragon egg, defender. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a number of ember counters on smoldering egg equal to the amount of mana spent to cast that spell. Then if it has seven or more ember counters on it, remove them and transform it. So it could just be one spell. The spell's large enough. Fireball for six. Turns into an Ashmouth Dragon. Whenever it's a 4 4 flyer, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it deals two damage to any target. Yeah, so this card's a lot worse than Thing in the Ice. Both like flipping it. Like when you're flipping Thing in the Ice, you're probably spending, you're probably casting like four mana worth of spells, right? <laughs> Just like chaining some cantrips together. This card kind of wants you to be doing like cost reduction stuff. Or alternate cat costs of things. Fire Blast almost flips it by itself. Yeah, you gotta actually spend the mana. Oh, it's the mana spent to cast a spell. Alternate costs don't don't count. I was lying. Fire Blast is not good with this card. <laughs> Fire Blast is kind of the worst with this card. Metamorphos is still good with it, but Metamorphos is good with everything, so who cares? Rituals work well, sure. Sure, sure, sure. It's a cool card, but I'm not excited about it. Probably won't cast it much. Maybe in limited, huh? In limited, you just like play a couple shitty removal spells, and now you got a dragon. That's pretty exciting. Spell Rune Painter, two in a red, Human Shaman Werewolf, two, three. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. We've got a little prowess action going on, and then it's daybound. The nightbound side is Spell Rune Howler. Oh, what a good doggo. Who's a good werewolf? Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus two, plus two. That's a lot more exciting. Yeah, it's a three, four. That's some fucking super prowess. Interesting. It's hard, hard to evaluate. Hard, hard to evaluate exactly how good this is. In limited. It's an uncommon. It's it's like clearly costed for uh, for limited play, not constructed play. But 
but certainly powerful. Well, it's not exactly the same thing as prowess, because it's instant and sorcery spell. So if you play an artifact, this isn't getting plus one plus one. <laughs> no jetpacks, C minus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, more of these werewolves need fucking jetpacks. Oh, this art's fucking sick looking. Like that flip side too. Stolen vitality. That is a hell of a smile. I, I, I can't I can't look away. I can't actually read the card. Because I'm like captivated captivated by this geese here. One of the red instant, target creature gets plus three plus one until end of turn. If it's your turn. That creature gains trample until end of turn, otherwise it gains first strike. So first strike when you're using it defensively, and uh, trample when you're using it offensively. That's good, that's a good trick. Those are useful abilities. You don't want to put too many pump spells in your deck, of course. Because you can get blown out by instant speed removal and bounce and, and all that stuff. And you need to have threats to point your, your pump spells at, but this is a solid one. If you don't actually have removal in your deck, combat tricks are a great way to fill that hole. Sunstreak Phoenix, two red red, four and two. Creature Phoenix flying. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day when Phoenix enters the battlefield. And whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you may pay one and a red if you do return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Hmm. So obviously a limited bomb, right? Just like a hard to deal with fucking 4 2 flyer that keeps coming back is very limited bombing. We were talking about constructed playable day and night cards. I don't think this is one. I don't think this is quite it. The main detraction from it becoming constructed playable is that you have to pay the mana to bring it back. It also doesn't have haste. Slap haste on this and, and make it so you don't have to pay any mana for it to come back. Or maybe make it pay one. Pay one to come back instead of two. And then it starts to become interesting for constructed. And... I mean, you could give it haste and have it still come into play and play tapped, but like when you cast it normally, like the haste would matter a lot, right? When does the day or night switch happen? Does it happen at the end of turn or beginning of turn? I think it happens at the start of the turn. We can read, we can read, just to just be sure. If it's day as the turn begins, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's as the turn begins is when it when it triggers. So it certainly matters that returns the battlefield tapped. So it'll return you can pay on your on the start of your turn or whatever, and won't be able to attack. If it returns on the opponent's turn, though, I'll be all right. Oh, you're saying it happens before the untap step? I didn't know anything happened before the untap step, but yeah, fair enough. It's the same time your permanence phase back in. Oh, okay. It says on the cards? Well, it doesn't say on this fucking card. <laughs> Nothing happens before on tap. Yeah, I didn't think so. A daybound creature coming in does not make a day automatically, unless it's neither day, unless it's not day or night. Anyway, 
Tavern Ruffian. We can move on to the next card. Tavern Ruffian, three to red, debound, two five. Pretty uh, fillerish looking front side, but uh, if the backside's good enough, who cares, right? Backside's a six five. Six five is pretty fucking big. I mean, this card is filler, but it's it's good filler. You're gonna kill someone with this thing. Rusty Venture, thanks for the 21 months there. Oh, Thermal Alchemist is in the set, as people pointed out. Mentioned it earlier. It's an uncommon. Kind of a cool one to have around. Love it. Village Watch, 4 and a red, 4 3. For people that haven't played with Thermal Alchemist, it's, it tends to see like some niche constructed play. Um, it's like a Popper staple, for example, in Popper Brain. Yeah. Uh, I've messed with it a little bit in Historic, Historic Baron, Historic like Mono Red Phoenix, that sort of thing. It's like almost good enough. It's like right on that edge. Might show up in Standard, huh? And whether you play it in uh, Limited or not, I mean, if you're doing this like a Spells Matters deck, like a deck that might want um, Seize, Seize the Storm, then it'll probably get some, some damage in. But uh, if you're playing limited, it should probably be because you want a 2 mana 3 But a 2 mana 3 that like blocks your opponent's 2-2s two and then you ping them on their end of chain, that's totally reasonable, totally fine. Especially if you're playing a deck that like wants the reach, right? All right, now I'm gonna move on to the next card. <laughs> Village Watch, four and a red. Haste, 4-3, human werewolf, debound. Nightbound side is wolves and werewolves you control have haste and it's a 5-4. A little bit of wolf and werewolf tribal synergy going on there. Fun. I don't think this is like a super early pick. I mentioned this like a lot, but like you can only put so many five drops in your deck, right? So this is like a totally good card, totally reasonable. But it's possible that your Wolf and Werewolf deck doesn't even want to fit this in just because there's so much competition at the five drop slot. Balder and Ambusher, two and a red, creature vampire archer. When enters the battlefield, if the opponent lost life this turn, it deals X damage up to one target creature or planeswalker, where X is the number of vampires you control. Yeah, so in limited, you're doing uh, vampire tribal a lot, especially like red black vampires. And you don't need a ton of vampires for this to be good. X is the number of vampires you control. So even if you just like hit them with a, with a two mana, two one flyer in the air, then this will be able to shock something when it comes down on turn three. I think this card's good. I'm not sure how aggressively I'm drafting it. It, it kind of depends on, on how much you want to be vampires, right? If you want to do the vampire thing, then I think you can pick this uh, before a lot of them. You can pick this really early. Kind of stake your claim. Archer with no reach, yeah, right? I guess this archer is only hunting humans. Needs that human blood. Doesn't give a shit about birds. You ever see a vampire drinking from a bird? That wouldn't make any fucking sense. All right, Valder and Stinger. One red, creature vampire warrior. Yeah, I kind of like these like hyper-realistic paintings coming in sometimes. His first strike, as long as it's attacking, and then you can pump it. Three mana, give it plus two, plus zero oh, until end of turn. So I'm pretty sure we've seen this card before, but like not a vampire. Seems solid. Solid, um, like difficult to block, right? And you attack with this card and your opponent's 2-3 and they, they can't afford to block it because then you just pump and get to eat it. Which means that it's going to be turning on cards like this Ambusher. So I think it, this is the sort of card that would be like fine filler in most limited formats, but I think it's a little bit better here. Cards that are hard to block become a little bit better due to the mechanics of the set. And that's it for red. That's it for the red review. I'm gonna take a quick break, um, get a little bit more water. I'm gonna come back and, uh, and we'll do green.